Building model context protocol servers or MCP servers isn't really that complicated. It's the same principles and concepts for client server architecture that we've been using for decades. It's just now that they have a little bit more capability to work with large language models. Let me show you how they are designed and how you can build one yourself. In the sequence diagram, we have a bunch of swim lanes. The first one is the user. This is you. The second one is the host application. This could be VS Code, Cloud, ChatGPT, Desktop, whatever it is. Then we have the MCP client, which is often initialized and running within the host application. Then we have the MCP server component, which is going to be connected to the MCP client. And then we have the external service, which is going to be connected to the MCP server. Now you need to understand that the flow of traffic is from the user through the host application, through the MCP client, through the server, going to the external service and all the way back. Assuming everything is configured, when the user opens the host application, it's going to initialize the, uh, an instance of the MCP client. The MCP client is going to connect to the MCP server and they're going to exchange a few capabilities. This is the handshake that they do. They're going to tell each other that, hey, I'm capable of doing this. And the server is going to respond with saying, I'm capable of doing that. They're going to do that with something called the schema. Now, when the user makes a request through the host application to the LLM model, the, sometimes the MCP client is engaged. And at that point in time, we have multiple options for how the MCP client and the server can be engaged and an exchange of information. The first one is application controlled, where basically the large language model needs more context information that can only come from the external service. So the MCP client will actually call the MCP server asking for more resources for listing, for reading. This could be like fetching file content, reading list of issues, fetching your commit history from GitHub, whatever it is. The MCP server will understand this request and will utilize the API from the external service to fetch that information. That API doesn't necessarily need to be REST. It could be GraphQL, gRPC. It could be even a file system call for all I care. It could be whatever you want that the external service supports. The external service will return the data. Then the server will return the resource content to the client, which is going to be used to enrich the prompt that is sent to the large language model. Another type of exchange is a tool execution. This is basically a function that the LLM can call. For example, it can trigger a web search, writing to a file, making an API call to some other third party, and then the LLM will determine it, if it needs to make a tool call or not. It goes to the, through the client to the server and then to the third party or external application. And then that service returns the uh, results, which are fed back to the large language model to show them to the user. Now, the last type of exchange is a sampling request, which is initiated by the MCP server instead of the MCP client in this case. And then this type of request is basically asking the LLM to generate information, to analyze data, to make a decision, to enable some uh, agentic or recursive workflows. The server will create a message. The MCP client will interpret that to request information from the LLM and maybe even approval from the user. And that's pretty much it for all of the flows. So once the user is done, they can close the host application, which is going to terminate the connection between the client and the server. And lastly, you need, don't need to do anything by hand because there are SDKs for all the popular programming languages that you can immediately integrate into your code base and get up and running pretty quickly.